Have you been super intentional about weaving that kind of diverse set of opportunities? I like to work, I like to stay busy. Who you are going down the pathway with makes a lot of the difference. The collaboration can be the best side of a thing or it can be the most miserable side. What is your sliding door where Jeffrey Wright could have been a different person? It was my mother who slid open the door and gave me a chance to do what I wanted to do. When and where have you done your best work? I got a little something for everybody. It just depends on what pocket I reach into, you know? Hey family, it's Carlos Watson, one of my favorite actors in the world is stopping by, Jeffrey Wright. You've seen him in so many good things, the big Batman movie's about to come out, of course, the French Dispatch, and so much more Westworld, you name it, but you've never seen him quite like this. He's at home in Brooklyn. You're gonna enjoy this conversation. Hey, Jeffrey. Hey, hey, how are you, man? Good, where in this uh, world are you? I'm in Brooklyn. Jeffrey, so were you in Brooklyn through the changes, or uh, did you just get to Brooklyn relatively recently? I was in London for a, a you know a large part of uh, the pause. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on the Batman movie over there, starting in January of 2020, and then we went on hiatus, forced hiatus, in March of 2020. I was here for the most part, and then went back uh, to London in September, from September to March of last year. So through the thick of it, I was there. And then I got back, I was here in Brooklyn for um, a couple of months before I went back out and started my commute back and forth between here and LA to work on Westworld. On what program or what show have you think you've done your best work? Oh, God. Uh, my best work is probably the next work, you know, the next thing to come out, I hope anyway. I don't know, I've, I, I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing it for several decades now. It depends on who I'm talking to. I remember I was down in the South doing some campaigning and I was going from barbershop to barbershop. It was in Rock Hill, South Carolina. It was in Charlotte. Man, Cadillac Records is a big thing down there. You know, I played Muddy Waters in that film. You're trouble, you know that? I know it. How about you? And man, I mean, you know, folks love that film, you know, they really got a lot out of it. They really felt it, you know, so there's that. There's another group of people who love what I did in Angels in America. The Cadillac record folks tend to like Peoples and Shaft as well, you know. You know why they call me that? Because Joe always takes care of your people. Yeah, actually, more or less. But then there's the Basquiat crowd. There's some overlap there. And then now there's the Westworld crowd. And I got a little something for everybody. It just depends on what pocket I reach into, you know? A little yeah. something, you know, you, you know, just, yeah. just, you know, toss it all out. Have you been super intentional about weaving that kind of uh, diverse set of opportunities or is that partially been just what's come to you and, and you've, you've chosen making one decision at a time? Yeah, I really just respond to the to the to the script, uh, to the character, and also to the collaborators, to who's working on the project. You know, who's the director? You know, who are going to be my partners in this thing? I've you know I've I've done it enough now to know that the collaboration is everything. The collaboration can you know be the best side of a thing, or it can be the most miserable side of this work. Like anything else, you know, who you are going down the pathway with makes you know a lot of the difference. But at the same time. The real primary thing is the story. Does the story interest me? I tend to like to work. I like to stay busy. And so by being flexible, I get to work in a lot of different spaces. What is your relevant sliding doors? Like what is your relevant what if, where, where Jeffrey Wright could have lived a very different life or could have been a different person? My time in, in college at Amherst was really pivotal because it gave me uh, well, for a number of reasons, but relative to my work, it gave me a chance to to pause and to figure out what I wanted to do, what I really wanted to do and what I was best suited for. I went to college with the idea of, you know, I studied political science, that so was my degree. And, you know, my mom was a lawyer. I come from DC. Those things interested me then, politics and law and government, and they still do. And I thought there would be some career around something related to those things that I would pursue. And the reason I say that is if there's a sliding door, it's it was my mother, you know, it was my mother who slid open the door as always, the door that led to all doors. And the way in which she informed what I do as an actor is that she took me to the theater when I was a child. 
So she would take me, and, it would, and they were the most, some of the most cherished evenings of my childhood was going to the theater with my mother and my aunt who raised me. And while it took a while for my mom to settle into the idea that I was an actor after I decided to be an actor, she absolutely opened the pathway toward that with those evenings at the various theaters in Washington. And I didn't do any acting in school. And when I got to college, my junior year of college, I, I finally decided to take this class in, in the theater and uh, an acting class. And the first day of that class, I went in there. We started working on these scenes from, I think it was Chekhov or something like that. And the first day of that class, I knew that was what I was going to be doing for a while. I'm now thinking about Jeffrey Wright's Mount Rushmore. So who is on your Mount Rushmore? Frederick Douglass would be up there. Uh, you, of course, would be up there, Carlos. <laughs> you, have, you know, and uh, and uh, I, 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 God, there's so there's so many. But I, you know, for me, and I think for many people, the leading figures on any Mount Rushmore for me are from family. If we're fortunate to have that type of support, my mother and my grandfather. No one surpasses them in, in, in my life. And if I'm chiseling somebody in, in the side of a mountain, you know, it, it, would, it would start with the two of them. And who were they or are they? Your mom, you said she was a lawyer. Where was she from? How did this woman become a lawyer in that era? Because I assume there weren't a lot of black female lawyers in DC at that time, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, my mom was the only woman to graduate her class at Howard in 1963, her law school class. So yes, she was on the cusp of that surge of women who were not sticking to the limitations of what had been uh, allowed generations before them. But the way she was able to do that was because of her parents. My grandfather quit school at age 14 and worked. I think he worked in tobacco fields. And then ultimately his primary occupation was as a waterman on the Chesapeake. And he did all in support of his five children, my mother being the third oldest. My grandfather and my grandmother they provided for their children whatever they aspired to do. And that was more than they had been provided. That's how my mom ended up as a lawyer in, in Washington, D.C. in the early 60s was, you know, by the graces of, uh, you know, the gifts of her parents. Jeffrey, you talked, I, I love what you said about collaborators and understanding who you're working with. Who've been some of your most intriguing collaborators and, and why? George C. Wolf is the collaborator that I've worked with most often. George and I did Angels in America on Broadway in 1993. That was the first time we worked together. And I don't think I've done a, I've done maybe two pieces of, uh, of theater since that he did not direct out of maybe 10 plays or 15 plays that I've done since then. And we've done a couple films together. Most recently, I played um, Adam Clayton Powell in a film that he just finished for Netflix. But lately, I've, I've had the good fortune of working with people like Wes Anderson, a film called The French Dispatch. We did another film this past year uh, called Asteroid City. And I absolutely adore working with Wes, like George, and like the great directors and collaborators, very demanding, but in the best way. I love working with my collaborators on Westworld with Jonah Nolan and Lisa Joy. Again, same thing, very exacting, very smart, and driven in a way that, that brings the best out of, uh, and asks for the best out of those that they work with. I just worked on, well, we just finished last year, The Batman with Matt Reeves. Again, great director, wrote this script, which was compelling and tight and dynamic and relevant and breathing interesting life into this franchise in a way that I thought was exciting. Jeffrey, you mind if I try a little rapid fire with you? Sure. Most compelling political leader uh, you've ever seen, read about, met, heard of? Well, I'm going to go with Frederick Douglass after my experience of the last three days in recording an audiobook of his writing. And Douglass' story, oh my God. I mean, you can't come up with a fictional character as dynamic as, as the life of Frederick Douglass. The man was an absolute type. Love that, love that. Your favorite movie of all time? I would have to say, I gotta say Apocalypse Now. I love the smell of night pump in the morning. I watched that film more than I've watched any other film, maybe 150 times, I don't know. Your top three actors of all time? Top three actors of all time. I will go with uh, Marlon Brando, 
got to put De Niro up there. You can go back and look at Raging Bull, look at Taxi Driver, and I will go with Sidney Poitier. I was just watching In the Heat of the Night the other day in honor of his passing. They call me Mr. Tibbs. And I watched Guess Who's Coming to Dinner a couple of nights ago. What he did at that time, the delicate balance that he was towing as a man and as an artist, just whew, singular and powerful. I had the opportunity to work with him early in my career. He was so gracious and so beautiful and so supportive of me. And he was just everything you imagined he would be. Best meal you've ever had? Best meal I've ever had. You know, food, yes, is about who prepared it and the ingredients, but it's also about who you're eating with. I'm gonna go back to my grandmother's house. You know, when those crabs came in off the Chesapeake and uh, the newspaper was rolled out with the old bay and all the family together sat around and, and cracked into them. Jeffrey, fast forward me 30 years from now, you and I get together. Where are we getting together? What's going on? Oh, 30 years from now, if we get together, you're coming around my way. Yeah. It's going to be near the ocean somewhere. Could be Hawaii, could be elsewhere in the South Pacific. And we're paddling out into the waves and catching a few of those. That's where I plan to be 30 years from now, is by the ocean, trying to catch a wave and catch a fish and keeping it, keeping it simple. You know, work, work well done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> job done. Time to uh, obsess on the other things. Hey, Jeffrey, this was an absolute pleasure. You should know that I have been um, more than a fan. I I've got such deep and fundamental appreciation for your skill and for your work. I've just, I've loved it. I've always loved it and have always felt like there was an extra something in there. And I, I as you talk about you know, going from Peoples to Felix, from um, you know Muddy Water to uh, my girl Lisa Joy in Westworld. Um, I, I've loved it all, so uh, I hope you'll allow me to to be just one more person to say that uh, that there always has felt like there has been a bit of magic. So, so thank you. Well, I appreciate that, Carlos. Thank you, and and ideally more to come until there isn't, and I'm in the ocean. Yeah. Hey, really hope you enjoyed Jeffrey Wright as much as I did. What a terrific actor. I've loved him in so many different roles. Love how much he loved his work, but also loved all of the good learning around Frederick Douglass. What a powerful, interesting person. Hope someone does something important about Frederick Douglass very soon. Love how he loved his mom. What a wonderful Mount Rushmore he would paint. And of course, I like how he ended it. That idea of going fishing, warm water, surfing, the whole deal. I like it. I'll see you in 30 years. Hey, hope you're enjoying this show. Don't wait 30 years to watch another episode. Got a good one every weekday. I'll see you again.